Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're going to install an IPE titanium exhaust in this Ferrari 458. So, are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and this is my dealership, Edgy Supercars, and over there is Josh, and Josh has to go to a fundraiser because he's a good person. <laughs> So he's cleaning up his car. Uh, it's late in the day, so I don't know how far I'm gonna get today, but we're gonna bring you along for this journey. We're gonna try and install this IPE titanium exhaust, and after it's all done, it will sound absolutely awesome. You can buy these exhausts on our website, normalguyssupercar.com. Use the code NGS10, it hooks you up with 10% off anything we sell. So we just redid the website. We're super happy with it. It's much better, much faster. It's, and be still, in, it's still a work in progress. Yeah, it's not, it's not done done, but it's better. And because we're in such a good mood, we're gonna give you guys something free. Well, one of you. First person to check out buying stuff that's at least a hundred bucks and use the code IPE rules. We're gonna give you an E50 fire extinguisher for free. First thing we're gonna do is actually pull off the tune on this car because we're gonna need to send the tune out. So I'm gonna do that before I pull the battery and anything else. So let's hop in the car, get the tune off, send it out, cause that's gonna take a day to come back anyway. And then we'll start tearing stuff apart and putting in this IP exhaust. So right here, this is our little OBD programmer for the 458. So the 458s, unlike the 430s and earlier cars, you can actually just program through the OBD port using some special tools. So we do sell these through our partnership with DME. We've gone through lots of different tuners over the years and we finally are happy with one. So we've been very pleased with DME and the prices are reasonable. This is like the My Genius Dim Sport thing. I've actually never used it and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be easy to use. So I'm gonna try and get the, the tune off of it so I can email it to DME to have them write the new tune for us. All right, just downloading the application I need and getting this thing set up, software stuff. You got, you know, some cards that tell you what URLs to go to and what things to download. So I'm just working through that. Boring stuff I'm not gonna show you right now. All right, it's just doing a bunch of updates and stuff. So it'll take a little while. Oh, I guess it, yeah, mandatory update. Yes, yes, okay. All right, YouTube, so we've got the car on, lights off, everything off. And the My Genius is plugged into the OBD port and apparently we go into work. Brand Ferrari, ooh, 458 Italia, yes. Please connect your vehicle to a stabilized battery. Charger, hmm, okay. I'm gonna plug in a charger real quick. Charger's plugged in, hit okay, switch the dashboard, check the connections, and press okay, yeah, 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 everything's happy. Starting communication. Switch off the dashboard to continue. Okay, protocol identity flash. Okay, I think we hit ID. Okay, that looks like it's doing more stuff this time because that last one was too fast. Say, so usually this takes a couple minutes. Okay, switch off the dashboard to continue. Task completed successfully. Sweet, I think it's on there. That was really quick. All right, we're plugging it back into the computer. Okay, we gotta open up the app. There it is, download from my genius. You can start the procedure. Next, select a destination. Next, okay, it's downloading. All right, there's my file with the original tune. And according to this, we just email it to DME and they'll send it back to us tomorrow. We gotta state the car details and blah, blah, blah. That should be it. All right, so they should have the file back to us about 24 hours and then we can put it onto the tool and reflash it up into the car you will be good to go. Now we can start actually wrenching. Okay, YouTube, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the bottom panels, and then we're gonna remove the fender liners and the bumper. So all that stuff has to come off. Ugh, yeah, Ferraris, man. Here we go. So I'm really not that big a fan of the bottom panel on the 458. It's actually kind of a pain in the ass, mostly because of these right here, these little air vents. You have to like unscrew them before you take off the bottom panel, and then you have to like kind of screw them in before you put it in place. It's really kind of a pain in the ass. Gotta get the diffuser off. It's basically mostly 10 millimeter uh, hex bolts, except for those for some reason are Phillips. Cause you know, like fitting a screwdriver in that small space is always preferred compared to a uh, wrench, right? No, stupid. Uh, on the plus side, this car looks to be very clean. So I'm praying that the bolts will come out easy. We'll see when we pull off the panels, but so far it's looking really good. I 
forgot there's those stupid Torx bolts on some of the 458s. Yeah, I think they're T27s or T... Yeah, I think T27. T27. One of them's missing. Bottom panel off, now the diffuser. All right, so there's six 10 millimeters, and then there's two, three, four, yeah, six four millimeter Allens. Sorry, there's eight 10 millimeter hex bolts, I forgot. I haven't done a 458 in a little while. Well, the good news is, the car looks pretty clean. Okay, while I have the 458 in the air, I'm gonna remove this little screw right here. This one is an Allen, this one as well. This is a Torx T, I wanna say 27. These two connect the bumper, and then there's two more over here, uh, because we're gonna, we're gonna remove the bumper eventually, so I'm just gonna preemptively pull those off before I lower the car down and start working up top. All right, we lowered the car down. We're gonna remove the engine bay panels on the sides and that's so we can get access to the Cadillac converters. So there's kind of like two ways to do it. One is you can kind of, well, you're gonna have to unscrew these, these two bolts. They're 13 millimeters from the mounts, but it's sometimes easier to remove this mount as well, which is also 13 millimeters and do that on both sides. Honestly, that's probably the hardest part of installing exhaust on the 458 is just align the Cadillac converters to get just right so the brackets align and everything. That part can be a real pain in the ass. Well, okay, removing the headers is the worst, but that's the second worst. So these are all three millimeter Allens. i remove those. All right, while I've got the car on the ground still, uh, we're gonna remove these two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the cats, cats to the brackets and then these three that hold the mount uh, in place. So we'll get those out of the way. And again, we're just kind of removing these just so that we have more access. Now, a lesson I've learned, there's a bunch of washers and stuff in these, so break it loose and then just do it by hand because you're gonna lose all these washers and stuff. They just kind of fall out, it's kind of annoying. So like, there's a washer on this side. And then there's like a couple on the other side. Oh, there goes that washer. Okay, next up we're removing the wheels. So you're thinking, how do you remove the wheels when you're on a four post lift? Well. This is what we use. We just use these little screw jacks. Uh, they're cheap and they can hold like 2,000, oh, it's 1.5 tons, so 3,000 pounds each. And that works pretty well. So a lot cheaper than buying one of those like hydraulic roller things. So it was like three grand, 50 bucks, good enough. All right, next up, gotta remove the fender liners, both the front and rear. And the reason we do the front and rear is, well, you need the rear to get the bumper off and you need the front because then the cats are like right there. And it makes it much easier to get to some of the bolts on the headers and to get to the clamp on the catalytic converters. Bunch of four millimeter Allens.
Okay, with the fender liner out, you can see just how much access you have to, right there's the cat, here's the clamp, here's the headers, here's the O2 sensor. You can even get to a couple of the bolts and the secondary air injection. And we have to take off all that heat, heat shielding stuff. Oh, that's Josh. And we have to, have to take off the rear bumper. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff to, to remove. All right, so now we got to remove the bumper. To remove the bumper, we first remove the tail lights. There is, I believe, three 10 millimeter bolts on that. And then there's, of course, the uh, wiring harness. Just pull up on a tab, I believe. Let me see. It's been a while since I did a 458. Yeah, pull up. Come on. Jeez, it's not coming. Pull out the tail light. That gets you access to. There's some bolts right there. There's a 10 millimeter here for the bumper, 10 millimeter there. And then a couple others, I gotta find where they are. Gotta reach up there, pull the tab up. I have to even push it in, get it loose. There, there's the, that's the brake light connector. Then 10 millimeter. Washers on the back side of the light, so keep it kind of tilted forward a little bit. There you go, see? And you don't want to set it down on the lens because it can scratch. Alright, get this bumper 10 mil. Alright, see that 10 millimeter right there? Now that's the other one that holds on the bumper. Get the, uh, Ratchet in there without too much trouble now that the light's out of the way. Get my battery fine. There we go. Okay, before we get too far, let's disconnect the power cable. Alright, let's try this one. This is a better screwdriver. There we go. Okay, once that's all the way up, then you can squeeze it like hell. There. That's one. So that's the main power plug, right? And we have a backup camera on this guy, so we actually have to get this one. Oh, there. That might be the way to do it. Just to pick away under there. God dang it. There. God. Pain in the butt. Oh no, he's got radar detector stuff. Uh oh. <sighs> have to, okay, it's got radar detectors. We're gonna have to clip those off. Give it a little snip. Forgot about one last bolt. There. See? Now the bumper's loose on this side. Alright, YouTube, it's time to phone a friend. It's time to take off the bumper. <laughs> Should be all set. Just gotta kind of peel it. There it goes. Ta da! All right, we're gonna take off this piece right here, this like foam. There's like, a, it looks like five or six millimeter Allens. There's one, two, three. And I'll expose this bar, which has some 10 millimeter L, uh, bolts that we can remove. That way we don't have to finagle this in and out of that loop. Makes it a lot easier getting stuff in and out. There we go. Now you can see the 10 millimeters holding on the loop. We'll just unbolt those. Next up, let's pull off the O2 sensor, get that out of there. I got this cool little socket tool. Makes it a little bit easier.
Okay, we're gonna do the clamp that holds the headers to the cats. Uh, be careful when you undo this thing. This little weld right here sometimes breaks. These things are like a couple hundred bucks from Ferrari. It's idiotic. And then a 13 millimeter or something. It's just the 13 on top. Sometimes there's a nut on the bottom. These ones don't have it for some reason. Now, sometimes you can pry it off with your hand, but these are on there. I'm just gonna try just stick it a stick a screwdriver in there and pry it apart. There. there I got the top half off now. Come on. Shoot. Nope. Oh. I'll get that off when I get a better angle on it. Okay, sprayed a little liquid wrench on these clamps because they're always rusty. There's two there and there's, well, it's one up there and they're 15 millimeter and sometimes you gotta use a little extra oomph so uh, we're bringing out the big guns. There's two 13 millimeter bolts or nuts holding on this mounting bracket onto the muffler. This bracket right here, that is one of the mounting brackets. There's one here and then there's one back here. Now, I swear to God, every other 458 I've ever done, those are 10 millimeters. And for some reason, these are five millimeter Allens. Uh, that's gonna be much harder because that means we're gonna have to do it by hand. So anyway, we gotta get those off. <laughs> In theory, you can remove the rear section now. In theory. You know what? I probably should have left that. You got the O2 sensor on this back still. No, it's on a cat. Oh, does it slide off? Yeah, there's a clamp. That's... Oh, I see. You got the clamps light loose though, right? Yeah. Well, you still got the hangers in there though. No, the hangers are all disconnected. Is it? Mm -hmm. Pry bar right here. Just so you know, Josh is keep hoeing it with the pry bar. Jeez. It's like dust that pops out of the muffler. I'm sure that's really healthy to breathe. There, it's coming off on this side. Is it? Yep. It's totally loose over here. Huh? Totally loose over here. Is it? Yeah. Wow. I think it's stuck on the other side now. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Try to tilt it down to clear that muffler. That massive turd. It's heavy. Yeah, it is. Compared to this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. That weighs nothing. <laughs> All right, with the mufflers out of the way, look how much easier it is to get to that cat, uh, the O2 sensor on the cat. That's the one that actually tells whether or not the cat's working. So those are the ones we don't really care about. But anyway, we got to get that off. So got my handy dandy tool. Oh, yeah. There you go much easier with all this room. 
There you go. All right, so we're at the part where we're going to remove the CAD style. This side is not that hard because you got a lot of room. This side, however, you've got this. So uh, it's probably best to disconnect this and remove the heat shield to get that out of the way. So uh, this one, though, sometimes you can just push it, you got to get the, the heat shield off and then kind of finagle it out of there. Maybe you have to like bend it a little or whatever. There it goes. All right, then I'll pop off that clamp. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Here's that clamp. Be careful with that thing. Don't break it. Okay, for the cat on this side, I removed the heat shield around the coolant reservoir and uh, I'm just going to wait until I remove the header and then I'll be able to pull the cat out. Uh, it's just way too tight. I mean, you could finagle it and it's going to be a pain in the ass or you could just wait till you get the header out. So uh, next thing I do is remove the heat shields that surround the headers. Okay, there's a couple of bolts to remove from the top for the heat shield. There's one right there, one right there, uh, one down there. And then I think there's a couple on the side, five millimeter Allen's, and this one is conveniently located directly below this pipe. Very limited access. Hooray! So this front one you can get with uh, one of these ball Allen heads. You can kind of push the pipe out of the way a bit. All right, YouTube, we're at my favorite part. Not really. Removing the headers. Now the thing that's different about the headers on the 458 versus the 430 is you have the secondary air pipe going right through the headers. So you actually have to undo that as well. I believe that's held on by two five millimeter Allens. I wanna say these are 12 millimeter or 13 millimeter. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, I have new hardware and new gaskets and everything. So we're gonna re not reuse any of the stuff we're about to take out. Uh, also, we're gonna have to take out uh, the air compressor, so uh, the AC compressor. We're gonna have to disconnect it and pull it out of the way. But you can see we got good access back here. It's pretty good access here. Zero access here. And uh, reasonably good access here. So this is where it starts to suck. And we start getting inventive and using every little wrench we can that can get in there. First side's out. Oh, pain in the ass. All right, now I gotta go to the other side. So I guess we need to first pull off the AC compressor. I hate this. All right, so we gotta pop off the AC compressor. It's held on by some 13 millimeter bolts. We also have to disconnect the belt uh, so it can get out of here. And we do that by using a 15 millimeter wrench on the tensioner, push it out of the way, pop the belt off. I lied, it's a 17 millimeter. My bad. All right, took off the AC compressor, zip tied it out of the way. Now we can get to those front bolts. So I'm gonna spray some more stuff on them and then start removing them. Yay. Well, YouTube, things were going way too smoothly, so one of the nuts stripped. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So this will be probably an hour delay. I tried putting some heat on it. Didn't help. It's time to Dremel it and just chip it away. I am shocked. I got it out using one of our little reverse outs. These things never work, and it worked first try. Admittedly, this is like one of the really expensive good ones. 
Yeah. I may have to put a link in the description below to buy these things because that just got my seal of endorsement. Um, look at that. It chewed the hell out of this thing getting it out of there. Nice. All right, YouTube. Other side's out. My God, these are such a pain in the ass. <sighs> this is the face of a tired Dan. Seven hours in. Not bad. All right, you can see the old turds and especially the old turd mufflers. Look at this. Massive size difference, tons of weight difference, probably about 30 pounds, honestly. That shit's heavy and that shit's pretty light. So now that's all out, I guess it's time to put it in and I'm gonna do that tomorrow because I'm tired. The next day. All right, YouTube, we got new hardware. So these are the little exhaust gasket rings that go in the headers. Uh, these are the manifold gaskets, the header gaskets. These are the little secondary air gaskets. And then we got a bunch of new brass nuts that go on the exhaust. So if you notice, these are oblong. These are special nuts for the exhaust that don't come off easy. That's part of why put on and taking off these exhausts is such a pain in the ass. So we're gonna use all this new hardware. So it's time to reverse everything and start putting in headers, I guess. Getting these things aligned is always a bit of a chore. So all this heat shields and stuff. There. Yeah, jeez. Okay. These tubes go directly in front of the easy access. I'm gonna have to do these from below. So you gotta kinda like push the header up in order to get these ones in here and use a super long extension. And the hardest part is just can't see shit. Damn. I can't see shit out of this thing. So you kind of like try to line it from like way the hell out here. It's super, super annoying. Okay, got the header bolted up. Still gotta connect the secondary air lines. That goes from here down in there. This is the part that is also kind of a pain in the ass. And then we also gotta do the uh, VO2 sensor up there. I gotta tighten that down, but man, look how cool that looks. So much cooler, so much nicer. Really a nice design and they're four into one. So you get a much better sound out of them. Okay, secondary air is connected. O2 sensor is connected, that took a long time let me tell you the hardest part about this honestly i think is the secondary air because it's just a total bitch uh look at all the tools that you're having to use to do this uh i've used every single one of these tools it's insane and the other trick uh is get some high temp gasket maker and glue the little stupid secondary air gasket onto the pipe before you stick it up there because as soon as you start trying to align everything it just falls off and it's absolutely impossible flipped over is because then the screw faces down it just makes it easier to deal with so with these things you kind of like gotta squish it just right hold it really tight you try and slide this stupid clamp over Oh. Mm. 
Now again, I'm not going to tighten it real tight yet. I'm just going to get enough so that maybe like the threads stick out the bottom of this thing. Just make sure it's on there. All right, so we gotta slide this heat shield and mount over that and then get those two bracket bolts in and then we can mount it up to this guy. Stuff starts to get a little bit pain in the butt right here. So yeah, I need to rotate that cat quite a bit. Oh yeah, that's pretty close. On these there is, what is it? It was a washer on each side of the bracket. So one like here, slide it through. Now I'm not gonna tighten any of these down until I get the rest of the exhaust installed because lessons learned there. It always needs to be kind of adjusted a bit, so. I'm just gonna put the bolts in, prevent it from moving around, while we get everything snugged up later. Now we're gonna put back in the O2 sensors and then bolt up the mufflers and X-pipe. So IPE sent some new hardware. We got these clamps and some nice bolts. So I have to figure out which uh, mounting points go where, but uh, it's it should be pretty obvious. And then also I forgot to tell you, we got a hookup we have a valve controller. We have a Forza Componente valve controller, which we do sell on our website, normalguysupercar.com, so check that out. Uh, so we need to get that mounted somewhere in here as well before we go too much further. Whew. Okay, so you use these rubber muffler mounts. You have to rip them off the old mufflers, so don't forget to do that if you're throwing those away. Make sure to keep those. Got spray a little bit of uh, like WD-40 or something on them to give them a little bit something to let them come loose, but yeah, they're... They're a pain in the ass to get off that thing. Don't forget to slip the clamp on first. Otherwise you're gonna be cursing later. All right, so. Man. Like a glove. Like a glove. Oh, this one needs to come over a bit. There we go. This will be about where it's at. All right, now we're gonna put those new bolts right there, just like we did right here. Two washers, one on each side. Washer on the outside, get that there. The washer nut. Bolt washer. Washer nut. All right, again, we're leaving everything loose because we still have to put on the X-pipe. Hooray! All right, so X-pipe. Again, put the clamps on first. Otherwise you're gonna be very mad. Let's see. I think I want them facing this way. I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, come on. Oh, there. It's gonna be a tricky. Hmm. Alright, well. Where'd that bracket go? Again, I'm not gonna clamp anything down yet because we're gonna have to align everything. Next up is this hoop, which just already I can tell it's far to the right. All right, so we need to motivate this thing to move. Rubber mallet works pretty good. There we go.
Okay, you can see the uh, mount, the top of the mount right there. So we got to put in the bolt and uh, bolt that down. Uh, there's, so there's that one and then that one and then the other side as well. Yeah, I got a washer that goes on first, and then the nut. Oh, that's gonna be. That's what I was afraid of. Yeah. All right, now that the exhaust is all the way in, we can tighten down these three and those two bolts on both sides. Uh, we're still gonna leave the clamps loose on the muffler section and the X-pipe until we get the bumper on, because I just wanna make sure everything is kind of aligned correctly. I mean, it looks, looks pretty darn close, but I don't know if I need to turn it or maybe scooch it one way or the other, so we'll just leave it loose until the bumper's on. Uh, we also have to put on those gold tips on the bumper, and that's super easy. It's just five, I think five or six screws. No big deal. Um, and then we can put the bumper on, get the fender liners on, and uh, put this thing back together. Don't forget to go back and tighten up these band clamps. So we'll do that right now. And these you want to be fairly tight, but again, be careful not to... Jeez, uh, I can't get it going. Be careful not to break these damn things. They're so expensive. All right, let's remove the old exhaust tips, 10 millimeter. You'll notice one of them came out with the uh, nut cert. So I'm gonna make sure that goes to the right spot. There we go. Out with the old and with the new. Okay, oh, look at that. There's glue on this damn thing. Ah. Uh. How the hell am I gonna get that? It won't go through the... <laughs> hmm, what do you think about this one while I put in some of the others? <laughs> I might have to like try and heat it up. Or... All right, so what I did is I just put in a vise, put some heat on it with a blowtorch. It kind of burned off some of the glue that was sticking to the bolt and I was able to uh, separate it. So that wasn't too bad at all. Got it back in there. All right, so now we can do this again. Let's put that one in last though, just cause I have a feeling it's kinda at its limits. Time for the bumper. It sucks doing it by yourself, but it's not impossible. All right, so yeah, this is this is what I'm talking about. If you look straight in, they still need to go that way. Also tilted slightly, so I need to beat them with the hammer a little bit. Uh, let's get the bumper fully mounted though first, because it might move just a tiny bit, and then we'll we'll beat those into place. There we go. A couple taps of the old hammer, and now they're nice and aligned straight. So that means we can clamp it all down. Bumper's on. Got to reconnect the bumper. Well, shit, I screwed up. Uh, I got all excited about getting the bumper on until I forgot about the valve controller. It's so much easier to do when the bumper is off. I think I'm gonna remove the bumper again, but at least I got the exhaust clamped down and put in the right spots. All right, YouTube, that's my Forza Componente valve controller. So you get these cool little remote controls and you can basically open and close the valves whenever you want. Do you have to use a little bit of an extension uh, hose, by the way, anytime you're doing these IP exhausts, because this is the factory one, it's way too short. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I need to go home, it's late in the day, but we got a lot of progress done, so we'll, we'll have this buttoned up tomorrow. So check out our website, normalguysupercar.com. There you can buy the Forza Componente valve controllers. Use the code NGS10, it hooks you up with 10% off. So we do appreciate when you guys can support us. But I'm out of here tonight. We'll see you in the morning. The next day. All right, so we're going to mount this Forza Componente valve controller probably like right here on the air box. It's probably a decent place for it. Got this cool strip of 3M Velcro. It actually works really, really well. So that's a great spot. It's nice and shielded from water. It shouldn't get wet. So we'll just clean up right here. And then the control, the, the actual valve controllers are right there. So we unplug those and plug into the wiring harness and then we can zip tie all that crap out of the way. We wanna make sure it's not in the way of the electronic parking brake, which is this guy. Then the other thing we have to do is connect some extensions to these hoses right here. These are the actual vacuum lines. We gotta run those down to the valves, which are right here. 
and make sure that those stay far away from the exhaust. We'll probably zip tie it to like some of those hoses that you see on the transmission to keep them nice and far away. So that shouldn't be a big deal. All right, Forza is mounted up, zip tied out of the way, connected up, and the vacuum lines are run to the valve controllers. Okay, now I can put back on the bumper and button everything up. Bumper's on, taillights next, then fender liners. All right, next up, fender liners. Fender liners in, now the wheels. All right, two things left. Top panels, bottom panels. Pro tip, do the top panels first because if you drop a bolt and you already have the bottom panels on, good luck finding it. Second to last item, bottom panel, and then we gotta tune it. All right, back in the office, gotta download the program. So we got the program, gotta hook up the My Genius. So we'll just plug in this USB cable. There's my file. Now we open up, once that boots into the USB mode, there we go. Open up this app. Okay, upload to my genius. There it is. Okay, next. And now it's uploading onto this. Yay! All done. Let's plug it into the 458 and flash this sucker. Alright, YouTube, got the car ignition on. Dongle is plugged into the OBD port, and we choose work. Writing and DME, yeah, the my file, whatever. Okay, yes. Okay, master ECU, start of right. Yes, it's on a battery tender. Switch on the dashboard, check the connections, and press OK. This thing writes a lot faster than the other tool we used. Switch off the dashboard to continue. Okay, okay. Switch on the dashboard. Give it a moment. Okay. Writing. Okay, it's programming. And the uh, computers are not happy. <laughs> it's like, ah, what are you doing? No! Ah! <laughs> All right, this is taking a little bit longer. Moment of truth. All done. Let's fire it up. all done. Guess it's time to take it out for a little spin, make sure everything's fine, burn off any excess, whatever. I don't know why exhausts always smoke the first time you run them. Whew. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a pretty serious exhaust. Tune sounds pretty good too. I can't wait to hear it with some downshift burbles and stuff. Let's go do that and uh, I guess that's it for this video. So like, share, and subscribe, hit the notification bell, check out normalguysupercar.com. There you can buy this IP exhaust. Use the code NGS10, it hooks you up with 10% off any IPE system. We appreciate you guys' support. We'll see you in the next one. We're gonna be doing a lot of cool car stuff. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. It's gonna be sweet. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> 